Hello, um, welcome to the first of, I hope, many development updates for a two-dimensional space game I'm making from the ground up in C++ and SDL2. Apologies if I sound like shit. I'm quite sick right now, so getting that out of the way. Why am I making a 2D space game? Well, to cut a long story short, I got really addicted to Star Sector. I think it's a great game. Um, I literally played through all the base content to the point where I had nothing left to do in that game. And then downloaded every good mod that there was and literally exhausted all the content that there was for Star Sector, or at least all of the content that I'm aware of, and wanted more of it. So I then started looking into modding it because I know how to code. Um, unfortunately, all the mods have to be coded in Java, which is the language that Star Sector is coded in. And I'm shit at Java, and I don't really like Java very much, to be honest. As a result, I then decided, fuck it, I'm going to make my own game inspired by Star Sector, uh, taking some of the elements that I really like in Star Sector, in particular the combat system, using that as inspiration to create my own 2D space game. Now in this game, unlike Star Sector, you don't control a fleet of ships. You have one ship, um, and that's the one ship you use throughout the the you know, moving around, traveling to different places, trading. Um, you could obviously trade that ship in for larger ships or upgrade it. There's a lot of different elements to the ships. Let me get my ship class up. So let's have a look at what we got here. Don't worry if you don't know how to code, I'll explain what this is. So currently there's different modular systems. There's main weapons. So all ships have a set number of weapon slots, like in Star Sector and you can input weapons into them. Unlike Star Sector, there's also engine slots for each ship. So the engines are modular. Uh, and all the engines have different stats, like max newtons of thrust output, um, uh, the different textures that are used to, to generate the exhaust, the different power draw that each ship requires. And weapons also have a power draw in watts. That brings me on to the generators. All ships have either one or multiple generator slots. These could be like nuclear generators or like even um, more conventional fossil fuel generators if it's like a really basic ship. And these generate watts by burning fuels, which could either be nuclear fuels in the case of nuclear reactors or diesel or um, other fossil fuels if it's like a more typical generator. So the whole setting of this game is unlike Star Sector where you have low-tech, um, mid-tech and high-tech ships. In this game, this is before shields are even invented. That's the whole idea. I won't go too much into the backstory, but it's not necessarily intergalactic uh, or even into, uh, you know, into system, into solar. This is, this game is probably set. Still have to work it out, which is why I say probably, but probably set just within our own solar system, in an alternative history, alternative universe where certain historical events didn't happen, and the major nations um, basically entered a state of cold war. And then when they were able to get out into space, that's when they started fighting each other because mutually assured destruction of planet Earth was no longer an issue once ships got out into space. So all the ships are kind of very low tech. I might implement shields later, but they're going to be really hard to acquire and they're not going to be anywhere near as effective as, as, as shields in Star Sector. And by shields, I'm talking about those sort of electromagnetic bubbles that you see over ships. There's still going to be armor in this, so armor is the main system. There's going to be different types of armor uh, of protection. There's different types of going to be different types of armor, like electromagnetic reactive armor, um, basic, you know, just like steel armor, 
armor that's like explosive reactive which means it has like these sort of semi-explosive plates that can deflect enemy shells because they explode before the shells hit them stuff like that so that's all yet to be implemented i won't go into too much detail on that let me just show, show you what i've got so far what i have so far is a very basic combat system that is mostly bug free i've also got a very basic newtonian collision system uh, which is a little bit buggy but mostly bug free um, i have a particle system which i've created uh, that i'm using for explosions which is pretty cool i'll show you some of the explosions I've got basic ai set up i mean you can just see if you know any anything about coding well probably don't even need to know much about coding to read what these different systems are i have implemented in the main game loop right now and a very basic uh, user interface very basic at this stage um so yeah let me i've taken the space station spawning off i'll get to that later for now let me show you the combat system i'll take this out of debug mode so that it doesn't run too slowly might need to recompile this here just give this a minute so the enemy spawning every five seconds a new wave of enemies will spawn this was sort of designed as an engine stress test so this is going to get quickly out of hand um so yeah just be aware of that there's going to be a lot of explosions and random stuff happening as part of the generator system i've also implemented the ability for the player to dynamically on the fly modify the amount of power they're generating which is important because if the player is starting to run out of fuel they might you know in the middle of deep space they might want to start lowering their power output of all their generators um, to increase the duration of time they can go without running out of fuel also players can dynamically allocate power between the different subsystems of the ship and obviously right now the two main subsystems are engines and weapons so by pressing here we go here's the game by pressing q and e i can dynamically allocate power between the weapons and the engines so if you look carefully at the amount of engine exhaust and one second i do actually have sound enabled let me turn that on there we go so there are the first the enemy ships spawning i'm actually going to put power into engines and power over to them likewise so if I press shift, by the way, the, the weapons can be controlled on a separate access. Then if I press shift again, the weapons will lock in place. I can control the ship's direction. Um, so you just saw a collision there. Let me kill these ships. Allocate more power to weaponry. So more power to weapons equals increased fire rate and also decreased reload speed and a couple other bonus statistics. Obviously, my ship right now is ridiculously overpowered for testing purposes. So I could just annihilate these guys. Oh, shit. Let me reload that. So, at the moment, it's round 8. I can see in my debug window, which you can't see. So there's currently 16 enemies. Currently, I can get to about... I think it was one and a half thousand enemies total before the game just completely crashed. Which I was pretty impressed by. Um, so the engine, whilst there still needs to be some optimization changes, um, is fairly resource efficient in its current state. Also, if I press Z, I can spawn in a massive explosion. You can see the particle system there. Now it's starting to get a little bit laggy. I'm going to go ahead and reload my weapons. So 
So if I press 1 and 2, you can see that I'm increasing or reducing the amount of power output I have available in watts. You can see there on the uh, bottom right hand side. Should maybe change that to say megawatts so it's a little bit more readable. Okay, now the, uh, the sound engine is starting to die under the weight of the amount of uh, sounds that are currently being played simultaneously. My weapons in. Uh, also, the background uh, rendering system has been created. So let me let me show you that. Let's fly away from these guys for a second. Get up to a decent speed. Let's say 2,000. Turn the engines off by pressing space. So you can see the background sy uh, system implements parallax. Well, that guy just suicided into me. Um, so there's three different layers, obviously moving at different speeds relative to the player. Uh, currently looks fairly ugly because they're just, you know, pixels essentially of different, varying different colors. But yeah, that's another system that's been implemented. As well, if you look at the bottom left, you'll see that I have the blue bar, which is for armor, and the green bar, which is for hull hit points. Okay, now it's just becoming completely chaotic. The, <laughs> the game in reality is, is not... I imagine probably not going to uh, have battles with this many ships in. I mean, currently there's... The last round just spawned in 56 new enemies. So God knows how many there actually are that are still alive from the previous rounds as well, but I, I'd guess probably a few few hundred total. Let's kill some of these guys. <laughs> Good God. Um, anyway, I think that's enough of that. I think you get the idea. Uh, next thing, final thing I wanted to show was the space station. So let me just turn off the enemy spawning by just commenting out that line. I'm going to have to recompile here. And I'll show you the, or I'll attempt to show you the space station generation. Now, the algorithm is incredibly simple for space station generation. Currently, I have no idea what that flicker was just there. That's worrying. Again, if you see any bugs, uh, this is a very early alpha version of the of the game. So, there's going to be a few. Um, but anyway, I digress. So, every 10,000 meters that I travel, a new space station will spawn in. Here we go. There's one. Collision detection is currently implemented, but none of the stuff I want to have implemented is for the space stations is in yet. So I want to have trading, I want to have different modules of the space station that spawn in that allow the player to do different things. I want to have a really complex... Oh shit, just shot past it. Oh, there we go, there's another one. Um, I want to have a very shit... Okay. <laughs> God. God damn it. Oh god, I've like ping-ponging between the two stations. Christ. So I want to have a really complex algorithm to... You know what, let me reduce engine power so it's a lot more controllable. Um, here we go, here's one. So I want to have a complex algorithm that will spawn in different pieces of each space station that do different things. Like they might have a repair yard randomly, for example. They have a different... They have a prosperity rating. They have maybe financial markets or tr you know different trade markets that the player can engage with, um, all that sort of stuff. Currently, none of that is implemented. It's literally just a textured collision object, or a I should say an array of textured collision objects, which have a very basic uh, 
generation algorithm. They have a certain number of components and there's certain rules between how the components should be joined um, and there's currently only vertical and horizontal components. That's it right now. But uh, hopefully in the near future I'll have something a bit more substantive, shall we say. And yeah, I'll make an update video when I, when I get to that point. There's a small one there. So there we go. That's that's about it so far. Um, hopefully some people are interested in, in what I'm making here. If not, I'm not too bothered to be honest because it's been a great uh, been a great way to continue to beef up my skills in C++. It's been a great learning project. And also at the end of the day, if I make a game that I myself want to play, then I'm happy because Again, the reason I made this was I ran out of content to play in Star Sector completely and then was inspired to create something that would fulfill my desire for the stuff that I liked in Star Sector but also had a, had its own unique elements. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and stay tuned for further development updates.